In this video, I am going to explain principal, practical aspects, advantages, disadvantages and applications of capillary electrophoresis. If you are new on my channel, please subscribe. Now let's start. First we will see introduction and principle. Capillary electrophoresis is a separation technique. Capillary electrophoresis is superior form of electrophoresis. Due to use of narrow bore capillary, it reduces the problem of sample overheating. Heat production is less and that's why sample zone broadening is also less. Sample peaks obtained in capillary electrophoresis are very sharp as compared to HPLC. It is mainly used for separation and analysis of biological samples in diagnostic and clinical labs. Separation of solute molecules is based on difference in the rate of migration that is electrophoretic mobility under the influence of electric field in a buffer solution. Here in capillary electrophoresis total velocity of solute molecules is very important and this total velocity of solute molecules depends on electrophoretic mobility and electroosmotic force and due to these two the separation of molecules occur finally we can say that the rate of migration depends on charge and mass of solute molecules and viscosity of medium now we'll see principle in detail but to understand the separation mechanism and principle of capillary electrophoresis one, sh one must know the instrument of capillary electrophoresis. So first we will see instrument and then we will go for separation mechanism. Capillary electrophoresis instrument has two buffer reservoirs filled with buffer solution. These are buffer reservoirs with buffer solution. A fused silica capillary extends between these two buffer reservoirs. Cathode and anode are placed in different buffer solutions in separate reservoirs. These electrodes are then connected to a high voltage power supply. High voltage of about 1000 volts is used in capillary electrophoresis. In other electrophoresis very less voltage is used but in capillary electrophoresis very huge that is 1000 volts are used in this technique. Sample can be introduced at one end of capillary and detector is present near the other end of capillary and this detector is connected to record. When capillary ends are dipped in buffer solution, the buffer solution will get raised in capillary due to capillary action. I think all are knowing about capillary action. Now when the buffer solution is raising in the capillary and at that point if we apply voltage between the electrodes the buffer solution will start flowing in the capillary. There are separate sample injectors in capillary electrophoresis instrument. We will see that later. Now due to voltage applied current will start flowing and buffer solution will start flowing in the capillary. When voltage is applied across the electrodes and electrolytes of buffer are flowing through the capillary, electroosmotic force is generated. Now we will see what is this electroosmotic force and how it works. Now before that one should know about construction of uh, capillary. Capillary is made up of fused silica. This fused silica capillary has selenol groups extending out on the inner surface of capillary. These selenol groups are of three types bound selenol, free selenol and reactive selenol. This point I have explained in detail in the introduction of chromatography video. Link is given in the description box. Now we will see briefly here bound selenol free and reactive selenol. Bound in bound selenol groups the selenol group is fully protonated and the reactivity is less. Free selenol
non groups are partially deprotonated and have medium activity while the reactive selenol groups are fully deprotonated and have highest activity now the chemistry of these selenol groups depends on ph when the ph is less than 3 bound selenol groups exist when the ph is between 3 to 9 free selenol free selenol groups exist and when the ph is above 9 reactive selenol groups exist it means that number number of selenol groups their topological arrangement and ph of buffer solution is very important in capillary electrophoresis generally in capillary electrophoresis buffer solutions used has ph close to 9 which means most of the selenol groups are reactive and deprotonated having negative charge if we take cross section of this cap fused silica capillary due to deprotonation of selenol groups the inner surface of capillary will have negative charge and it will attract the cations from buffer solution these cations are tightly adsorbed on the inner surface of capillary forming a fixed layer now the negativity of these selenol groups is partially compensated by the anions by the fixed layer so it will attract more number of cations from buffer solutions forming diffuse layer in diffuse layer number of cations is more than the number of anions fixed layer and diffuse layer both will produce electrical double layer next it comes bulk solution where the number of cations and number of anions is equal now as we know the capillary is circular the cross section will show one more pick one more diffuse layer and fixed layer this is one more diagram showing cross section of capillary this is inner surface of capillary with negative charge which is holding cations tightly with it forming fixed layer and inner to this fixed layer there is diffuse layer and bulk solution in diffuse layer number of cations is more than anions and in bulk solution the cations and anions are equal in number when voltage is applied across the capillary cations in diffuse layer layer will get attracted towards cathode dragging the bulk solution with them this is known as electroosmotic flow this is inner surface of capillary with negative charge and it is holding cations tightly with it forming fixed layer when voltage is applied cathode is having negative charge and anode is having positive charge and high voltage is applied at that time the cations from diffuse layer will get attracted towards cathode dragging the bulk solution with it this is known as electroosmotic flow or electroosmotic force it means that electroosmotic force governs the movement and direction of flow of solution in capillary electroosmotic force is originated near the capillary wall due to due to it it has unique flat flow profile due to this flat flow profile it will minimize band broadening and improve the peak resolution capillary electrophoresis has superior peak resolution and separation efficiency than hplc now we'll move towards electrophoretic mobility electrophoretic mobility is defined as rate of migration of particles per unit field strength here particles means solute particles or solute molecules electrophoretic mobility is given by the formula mu is equal to q upon 6 pi rn where mu is electrophoretic mobility of particles n is net charge on the particle r is radius of the particle and n is viscosity of medium by observing this equation we can say that net charge on the particle size and shape of the particle and viscosity of medium these three are very important factors 
which are affecting electrophoretic mobility there are other factors also which affect the electrophoretic mobility i have explained them in other video link is given in the description box now we'll see these three part uh, these three factors in brief first is net charge on the particle or net charge on the sample molecule if the molecule has higher charge greater will be the electrophoretic mobility and this charge of the molecule depends on ph of medium now if suppose there are two molecules two sample molecules one is having two positive charges and other one is having one positive charge and when voltage is applied the molecule with two positive charges will move fast and the molecule with only one positive charge will move slowly towards cathode not only charge size and shape also of the molecule also matters the large particles will have less electrophoretic mobility than the smaller one if these two are the sample molecules the small molecule will move fast towards the opposite charge than the large molecule it means that the molecules with more charge and small size they will move fast towards the opposite charge and they will have more electrophoretic mobility the molecules with large size and small charge less charge will have less electrophoretic mobility now not only size but shape of molecule also matters round shaped molecules will have more electrophoretic mobility than the sharp shaped molecules these are the round shaped molecules which have more electrophoretic mobility than the sharp shaped molecules not only charge size and shape of the molecule but viscosity of medium is also a very important factor if the medium is more viscous electrophoretic mobility of all types of molecule will be less and if the medium is less viscous electrophoretic mobility will be more now we'll see total velocity of solute molecules total velocity of solute molecules is equal to electroosmotic flow plus electrophoretic mobility of the molecule separation of sample mixture depends on total velocity of solute molecules now how these solute molecules helps in separation of sample mixture solute with net positive charge will move fast than the electroosmotic flow the solute molecules with no net charge will move at the same speed of electroosmotic flow the solute molecules with net negative charge will move slow than the electroosmotic flow so uh, in this way the total velocity of solute molecules will help in separation of sample mixture now we'll see instrumentation in brief capillary used in capillary electrophoresis is of 2200 micrometer in diameter and 2200 cm in length the capillary may be coated with support medium or it may be uncoated depending on this there are types of capillary electrophoresis whether it is coated or uncoated the fused capillary the fused silica capillary has polyimide coating on the outer side of it for its protection now sample injection in capillary electrophoresis there are two types of sample injectors first is pressure differential method in this method pressure is applied across the capillary while it is dipped into sample solution and second method is electrokinetic injections where voltage is applied and the ions are allowed to migrate into the capillary Now next is detectors used in capillary electrophoresis. There are various types of detectors used in electrophoresis, capillary electrophoresis. First is UV visible detector, second is diode array detector, third is fluorescence detector, fourth type is electrochemical detector and next last maybe uh, mass spectrophotometer detector may be used in 
capillary electrophoresis now whatever the detector used it is present near the end of capillary it is not present at the end of capillary so the detector which is present near the end of capillary it is called as on column detector now we'll see detection of solute and electrophorogram uh, as we know the inner surface of capillary is negatively charged and it is holding uh, the cations tightly forming fixed layer detector is present near the end of capillary this detector is connected with the recorder which record the signals in this way uh, on the x axis there is migration time and on the y axis there is absorbance if uv visible detector is used when electrolytes of buffer solution hit the surface of detector will get baseline and when the solute molecules hit the surface of detector will get signal the first solute molecules has reached to the detector so first signal is obtained now second type of solute molecules reaching to the detector reach to the detector second signal is obtained once again after that we will get baseline these two are known as sample peak and the time required for uh, a solute molecule to migrate through the capillary it is called as migration time and this overall graph is known as electrophorogram all solute molecules travel the same distance but the migration time for that distance is measured migration time is helpful for identifying the solute sam solute molecule and the peak area or peak height is used to determine amount of solute in sample it means that migration time is a qualitative parameter while peak area or peak height is quantitative parameter now we'll see advantages and disadvantages of capillary electrophoresis first advantage is it has high efficiency of separation it requires short analysis time it is simple and automated technique very less amount of sample is required the cost of instrument is less than hplc disadvantage is sample molecules may stick to the walls of capillary the result obtained are not much reproducible so these are advantages and disadvantages of capillary electrophoresis now we'll go for applications capillary electrophoresis is mostly used in diagnostic and clinical labs it is used for abnormal hp detection and characterization it is used for immunotyping it is used for analysis of dna that is separation of dna fragments and their characterization it is used for carbohydrate analysis for determination of post transitional modifications it is used in the analysis of pharmaceuticals there are many applications of capillary electrophoresis i have mentioned few here all this is about capillary electrophoresis if you uh, like my video please share it and subscribe my channel and thank you for watching my video thank you very much